Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to the bench. Have a new gadget for the bench to take a look at here today, and it's the Quant Asylum QA403 Audio Analyzer. This is something I've been needing for the bench for quite a while. I've been talking about it. The main reason I got it is for measuring distortion. And as we shall see, it is quite versatile and can do quite a bit more than just that. So what I'll do in this video is we'll talk about this a little bit and then we'll hook it up and perform a couple quick test measurements. Okay, so it's kind of nice here. They provided a bolded list right on the cover here. So it contains a 24-bit analog to digital and digital to analog converter. Okay, so what's that all about? For measuring things such as distortion on a high-performance audio device, you know, oscilloscopes just don't have the bit depth. You know, this is an 8-bit oscilloscope. It does have an FFT mode, so you can graph the, uh, the amplitude versus frequency and see all the, you know, the distortion, the little notches, the harmonics. And, well, 8 bits is just not enough. I know they have higher resolution scopes these days, you know, they might be 10 bits or 12 bits, but, you know, 24 bits is what you really need for bit depth. And in a way, it's two devices in one because you have a signal source, you know, has the output and the input. And it's programmable, and we'll take a look at that a little later on. Up to 192 kilo samples per second. So that means it's really meant for audio frequencies it's not something you're going to use for rf so yeah you're it's meant for the audio frequency range and a little bit beyond but like i say you're not going to get into rf with this fully isolated from the pc and that's because it's usb powered so on the back here it has a usb connector and one problem connecting the noisy PC ground to a sensitive device like this is you can bring in some noise. So it is galvanically isolated from the PC even though it sends data and gets its power from the USB port of the computer. It has differential inputs and outputs as you can see here, BNC type connectors. That'll help you get rid of external noise because it's balanced. You don't have to use it balanced. You can use it single-ended, but it's nice to have that capability. Built-in attenuator. That's nice to have because you're going to be measuring signals of several volts down to millivolts. And you want to get as much data into the ADC as possible. So you want to be able to set attenuations. You know, I might be measuring... An amplifier with a large voltage swing or I might be measuring something with a headphone out jack that only puts out a few hundred millivolts. A couple gotchas I want to mention with this device is because it is a USB powered device and it does require not quite an amp but I saw it using between 800 and 900 milliamps in use. So the computer or your laptop whatever you're using it with must be able to source that much current from the USB port. Also, you have to watch out for the cables. A lot of those USB cables have very thin wire. And it happened to me. I grabbed a available USB cord, plugged it in. This would not connect. So I had to raid my printer for a shorter, better USB port, plugged it in, it worked just fine. So just be aware of that when connecting it to your computer. Also, you have your... Uh, maximum input levels you don't want to exceed 32 volts dbv what does that mean you know decibels are always relative to something so a dbv is one volt for a zero dbv and that's equal to 40 volts rms or 56 volts peak and they give you the dc and ac plus dc limits as well which is of course it's going to be the same for the RMS and 56 for the peak okay I hooked it up to the computer here I don't have coax cable yet you know that's something I have to get but I'll just use these for now they'll work 
and launch the software application. It's freely downloadable. When you first start it up here, you want to look at the bottom and it should say that it's connected. If you get that kind of reddish box, you might have a problem with your USB cable. That's what I had when I used a longer, I guess, lower quality cable. It wasn't able to connect. And um, it displays the USB voltage and the USB current. And you can see we're drawing about you know, just under 800 milliamps. And when you're using it, it could jump up higher. So, you, like I say, you want to make sure your computer or laptop or whatever you're using is capable. They mentioned something about using a USB hub, a powered hub, that will be able to supply more current if you're having problems there. Okay, so this is the software. you got your control panel over here and your display over here. Kind of like an oscilloscope, but on the screen. So over here you have your run stop can select your sample rates you can run or you know stop it or idle it next you have what they're calling full scale input this is where you can set your measurement levels you know it defaults on at the highest attenuation and these have the attenuator always active and it's very important you want to set this properly for what you're measuring. So if you're measuring something that's only putting out a few millivolts, you want to try at a lower level to get more data into the device for more accurate measurements. And of course, if you're measuring the output of a power amplifier, you're probably going to want to start at the largest level because you don't want to clip or anything. Next is the axis. You can set the display for dBV, dBr, linear or logarithmic. And, you know, this is from plus 20 to minus 160 dB. So, you know, that's plus 20 down to minus 160. Or for, you know, if you're measuring something with a tight frequency response and you just want to see from plus 1 to minus 1, you can select that and you can tweak the axis levels there as well. Acquisition, this is where you can set your your buffer size and we'll take a look at that later and your averaging which kind of averages out the noise so you can see the harmonics a little better. Weighting, you can do A and C type weighting or user defined. I normally don't use those. The windowing the different types of windowing you use and it has to do with the mathematics for you know displaying the uh, FFT here's your measurements the gain RMS THD THD plus noise signal to noise ratio these are your signal generators here you have two of them you can set the frequency and well this is the frequency and the amplitude for one and two you can do multi-tone tests white noise frequency response tests last but not least you have cursors you know a couple cursors you can set up if you want to use those um, probably not going to use those but they're available if you need them okay so i have this thing set up to measure itself just the left channel and I am using it single-ended. When you do that, you have to put a terminator on the unused port on the input. And like I said, I don't have coax cable yet. This will work fine for now. So I'm sending a signal from the output into the input. And uh, looking at the FFT, of course that's the fundamental. Now I have these little tabs up here that that are showing different things. Now, ignore these numbers because this is not optimally set up yet. Uh, and that's what I want to talk about. Um, of course, the total harmonic distortion in dB and percent. And the averages I don't have turned on yet. 
and I have the buffer set to 32k. That's yeah, that's good enough for speed and accuracy. If I'm going to actually take a measure, it might bump that up a little higher. And this shows that I'm using the signal generator number one at one kilohertz, and that shows the voltage I have set, the dBV. So if you did the 20 log this number, that would give you minus 7 dBV. Okay, bear with me here. I got a mouse with my left hand and hold the camera. I, I need to set this attenuator. It's set to the highest, and I'm not going to get good readings that way. So it's such a small signal. I'm going to set it to zero. And look what happened here. Look how low that is. <laughs> See how that dropped down? I need to turn off the right channel because I'm not using it. See, red is right. I'm not using that right now. So let's turn that off. And that's where you go over to display and just click it. Ugh, it's hard to mouse with the right hand. Okay, look at that. Look how low that is. Down around minus 150. And uh, let me do another thing here. Let me turn on the averaging here. And that will get rid of some of that noise. See how the noise is shrinking down and you can start to see these little bumps here. I think that's just noise. And watch this noise. I'm going to put my hand over this wire. See those, see those nodes growing up there? I'll take my hand away. And they'll go down. So using coax and using it in differential mode will help eliminate this. You know, this is probably common mode noise that's getting in. I bet that is, well, that's at 60. So let me put a marker on that. So this has a neat function. You just click here and it puts a marker. And look at that. And it's about 60 hertz. It's very low at minus 124. But with such a sensitive device, you're going to see the, that noise leaking in. So that's why you want to use differential probing and all that. And there's some other nodes here. That's just coming from outside because like I say when I put my hand over that that wire see those grow some new nodes pop up so I can tell that's external noise getting in let me put a marker here and marker zero it automatically puts the largest one at zero and of course that's one kilohertz at minus 7 dB. I found setting the amplitude to around minus 7 gives you the best readings. If I adjust the amplitude so that this is closer to zero, you know, this creeps up. And if it's too low, you're not getting as much data into it, and it also creeps up. So this is just brilliant. Look how low that is. I shouldn't have any issue measuring all but the most difficult amplifiers, meaning high performance, difficult to measure, I should say. So with my oscilloscope, I can only measure down to like 0.2 or something because it's 8 bits. But look at this. Look at the order of magnitude I can measure down to with this thing. Okay, I disconnected everything from it. I just wanted to see what its baseline was. And yeah, that that node and those other little nodes are external noise. This thing is really quiet. There was some junk getting in up at the higher end as well, but now it's pretty flat. Yeah, this thing is nice and clean. If you're going to measure distortion plus noise, you've got to have a super clean environment. Or, you know, external noise will get in and affect your measurement. Okay, now I'm measuring the field tech. 
feel the quality of this function generator here set for one volt one kilohertz going in single ended into the quant asylum with the terminator on there yeah not so good is it look at all of that 0.12 i mean it's not awful but it's just not good enough for measuring high performance audio you, you know you'd use that as a signal source of course and uh you're not gonna do any better coming out of the amplifier you're measuring than that so that's why you need a uh, a very low noise low distortion signal source that this thing provides and a couple other things real quick you have visualizers like a filter explorer oscilloscope so on and so forth wow and flutter so this thing you know, if you're measuring the speed of like a tape deck or something, you can input a signal. And of course, the wow and flutter is going to be extremely low because it's a digital source. It gives you the readout here. So yeah, very versatile device this thing is. I'm looking at the Quant Asylum website now, just a little sampling of some tested measurements you can do here. So power amps, they give you several you know, um, examples here. How you can measure speakers, you can measure microphones, DACs, LDO, component noise, uh, using the outboard processing gear, manufacturing testing. It does have this application called Tractor. It's designed for automating measurements with this thing so you can use it in a production environment and you can do pass fail test and like I say you can automate a bunch of measurements so yeah if you want to use something like this in a production environment it certainly has that capability programmability if you're a programmer and I'm not really a programmer but it shouldn't be too difficult to program the thing if you want to have it do or perform a certain task well I think I'll wrap it up here before the video gets too long I just want to make kind of an introduction we'll dig into this thing more in later videos you'll see it in use so start using it to measure the distortion of these amplifiers I test and maybe frequent use it for a frequency response test as well I know I said I was going to do the speaker build project video, but this came in. I want to get that out. And I owe a company a review on a Class D amplifier, so i got to get that out next. Maybe I'll incorporate this into tested measuring of that thing. Uh, I guess uh, for now we'll wrap it up, and I thank you for watching.